Hello guys, it is Sasuke Dracon, and I'm here to do a episode 26 review! And a series review of Mirai Nikki or Future Diary for those of you who prefer the English name. Darn you! And on to the episode 26 review. It's not going to be much of a review because I'll just say I was disappointed with it. Because I'm going to do a series review, so for those of, the, of you who have not watched the show, uh, I don't spoil it for you. But I will say, I was disappointed with the ending. I, They changed the ending from the manga to the anime, so I was very disappointed with that. But that's all I'm going to say on it. Okay, on to the series review. Oh, wow, wow, I'm already, I'm still under a minute. Okay. Mirai Nikki was a 26 episode anime that aired between October 9th, 2011 to April 15th, 2012. It was produced by Funimation Entertainment and Asteroid. And its genres are action, mystery, shonen, supernatural, psychological, and thriller. 23 minutes per episode and rated R. Okay, I'll be reviewing this show on nine different criteria. The uh, eight different criteria: the setting, the characters, character design, the art style, character development, speed and rate of the episodes, story, and the music. So let's just go ahead and get on in there. The setting is this. It's about a young boy named uh, Amano Yukiteru, who is a loner and not very good with people. So he just writes a diary by himself about, you know, stuff that happens around him. Then one day, uh, his imaginary friend, Deus Ex Machina, gives him a cell phone, uh, his cell phone, a power that allows him to predict the future. But, he also gives this to 11 other people. So, the story is, is that it then becomes a battle royale with all these people. So, he has to survive and not get killed, for the one, the winner will become the new god of time and space. I really think it is it is just a very good setting, very good plot, whatever you want to call it, and I think it was just great. Although, in the anime, it is action-oriented instead of psychologically oriented. Now, that not might not make sense to people who haven't read the manga and just watch anime and you know people have even watched a series and stuff like that but it's just a feeling you get from it that it's a lot more action oriented than anything so that's a real downside because the manga was one of the it was so psychological it was just a great show but they changed it to anime it was a bit more action oriented not saying it's a bad show because of that I'm just saying it was a bit disappointing seeing this transition but uh you know that's uh thing for another day. Overall, the setting, or plot, or whatever you want to call it, gets an 8. Maybe because of the transition between the manga to the anime, and because it has a few problems later on down the road. Okay, the characters. I have to say, I loved the characters. Because as I was saying, there is 11 other people besides Amano Yukiteru that has this power. Although it goes from 1st, 2nd, 3rd, 14th, uh, you know, I mean 4th, 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th, 10th, you know, so on. Um, there's really only two actual main characters. The two main characters are Amano Yukiteru. Now he, this is where a lot of people complain about the show. They complain about the show because of him. His personality is he's a bit of a coward, but what do you expect? If I was thrown into a game like this, I'd be a coward too! <laughs> you have to look at that. He's not some assassin trained to fight. He's just a regular kid. He's just a regular kid who was thrown into this kind of situation which nobody should be thrown into. So of course he's going to be scared, of course he's going to be nervous, of course, and he doesn't want to kill anybody, 
nobody wants to kill anybody. Except for, you know, those uh, weird people, but, uh, you know, whatever. But I'm just saying, this is why the show is good. It's because it doesn't have a character that is an assassin or somebody who doesn't care about killing people. It shows that he's human. But anyway, he is a bit annoying at times with a few of his things, but that's why he's a good character. I will defend it, he's a good character. Although he does not get much development throughout the story, he is a good character. And I will defend that. I'm sorry I did not give a good review of Yukiteru, but <laughs> I'm tired of seeing people complain about him. Okay, Gasai Yuno. Yuno is just plain awesome. She is <laughs> so messed up in the head. She's 14 years old and she's obsessed with Yuki. She is a yandere, which means she wa she loves somebody to the point of actually harming them. So, she is very messed up. She does something to Yuki, which is just so messed up, it's amazing that uh, Yuki can still love her. Oh, and by the way, those two are in a love relationship. But anyway, and she's also the killer of the two. She's the one who protects uh, Yuki throughout all of this game. And she is very awesome. And there are a lot of other characters that do show up in the uh, anime after a while. But I'm not going to go into detail about them because that would be actually be spoiling what happens with some of them. So... I have to say, the characters, I really like all the characters, especially Ninth. Once you see her in episode 2, she is just awesome. And I like 6. I'll just say that. I like 6. I felt sorry for her, as well as 4th. I wish I could say more about him without spoiling anything, but it's a spoiler-free review. Like, if you guys want a spoil or a review, then I might do one, but if not, I'm just going to do this no-spoil review. Overall, the characters are very, very good. Although, some of the side characters could have had a bit more development. So, I will give it an 8. Character design. I think the character design is also very good. Um, although, I know you know it actually does not work for her, but yet at the same time it does because of how innocent looking she is and it's just so good. So that has me torn between giving an 8 and giving it a 9. Just because I do not like the design of a few of the other characters, I'll just say that. So, 8.5. I'll just give it an 8.5 since I can't decide. Now the animation or art style. Um, I mean, it's good. But, there's nothing really that great about it. I mean, it looks good, it's never really looked bad throughout the show, but when you compare it to stuff like uh, Guilty Crown, the Iro no Hanoha, or Nanoha, or something like that from the uh, previous season before this show came out, it just kind of overshadows it. So, I'll just give it a 7, and by the way, my average is a 5.5, so... That's a very good score. The character development, um, it is a very hard to say character development with the show. So, also because character development is actually not that needed for the show, but most of the characters do have some sort of development, because. Yuki Teru grows as a person with his values and outlooks on life and stuff like that. You know, she doesn't really change. It's Yuki, you know, just repeatedly. Um, I don't know. I'm just not even gonna rate it on character development. I'm just not gonna rate it on character development because of all the characters in the show, and since not all of them get development, I just can't rate it on a development. Okay, uh, I decided to go ahead and make this a spoiler uh, review. If you do not want to get spoiled on the show, I suggest just uh, stop watching now. Um, 
because I will be uh, uh, going over a few of the things that I do have complaints about about this show because I do have quite a few complaints about this show. So as I said, if you do not want to be spoiled, stop watching now. Uh, when it hits 10.30, I will start uh, spoiling stuff. You have 8 seconds. 5, 4, 3, Pepsi is good. Okay, you've been warned. Okay, a lot of the complaints I have is with the uh, confrontations between the other uh, numbers. I'm going to just call the people numbers because that's just what I like calling them. Especially with 12. This is a complaint I had with both the manga and the anime. 12 is the Yomo Tohu Saka, a blind man, you know, everything. The problem I had with it is we barely even get to see anything about the guy. I mean, we find out he's like a hero and stuff like that, but we don't even get to know anything about him really. All he knows is he's blind, he thinks he wants to be a hero and stuff like that. So, and the way he goes out is just so stupid. I mean, I don't even think we'll get him for a full episode. Well, maybe, maybe a full episode, maybe two. I mean, he's not even there for very long. That's the complaint I have with both manga and anime. Okay. One of the other complaints is it involves Gasa Yuno's past. It involves her past. Um, in the manga, it went into more detail about why she went insane. In the anime, it does the same thing, you know, but it just says she was caged up. But that's not it. In the manga, she was fed, like, to Tommy mats or whatever those things are made of, you know, to try and like choke her, suffocate her, stuff like that, and just give her vitamins and no food to make sure she stays alive. And all it really says in the anime is that she is just locked up in the cage, and I don't know, but I just think that was a bit of a difference. Okay, um, a few more differences is, uh, what goes on in the last two episodes. Just like the manga, this thing is rushed as beep. <laughs> That's all I can say. It is rushed as beep. <laughs> because all the things you have going on. You have Yuno trying to kill Yuno. You have uh, Yuki Taro trying to stop uh, second I mean, first world Dino from killing third world Dino. Because first world Dino killed second world Dino, and now that they're in the third world, since they can't go back to the second world, they have all this going on, and it's just like, what the beep? I mean, when I first read the manga and saw this, I had to reread it, because it was just like, what the heck just happened? I just think it's, they could have done better, I mean, make it a 28 episode series or something. Just because this was so rushed, I don't know, it just... Seems like it was not that good of an ending. I think they could have done better. I really wish they would have done it a bit differently, which they kind of did. And that brings me on to my next uh, thing I have to gripe about. Is the ending. Instead of what I like to call the Hammer Time ending, because... Uh, uh, you read the manga, and you know, with the help of Third World Mirror Mirror, or... I have no idea how to pronounce that, I just... I've never been able to pronounce that person's name. And Deus, they're able to, like, break the boundaries between time and space and get to the second world or whatever. And apparently everybody in, like, the third world has their memories of the second world or something. I don't know. It's just very weird. I'm probably gonna... If anybody watches this, just... Pretty... <laughs> I'd really appreciate if you'd correct me, because I know I'm wrong about stuff, but I just think it was a rushed ending. And my enjoyment rating on the show was a 9, and here on Nikki, we see an 8.5 out of 10. That's a very good score, and for now guys, just leave a comment down below and hit the subscribe button above. Tell me what you think about this review and the anime in general. I look forward to reading your thoughts, so for now guys, I'm out.